answers, you call in, you give us answers, we solve it together, then you have a great reward from Joy Learning Channel. Amino etane, CH3, CA2, NH2, is a weak base with dissociation constant KB of 4.5 times 10 power negative 4 mole per dm cubed at 25 degrees Celsius. I write an alpha equilibrium equation for its dissociation in water. Beta expression for KB of amino ethane. I, I. Given that the concentration of amino ethane is 0 0.311 mole per dm cubed, calculate the alpha POH of the solution. Beta pH of the solution. Gamma percentage protonation of CH3, CH2, NH2. That is amino ethane. Okay, so the pH and the POH, we're going to start from the very basic, then we go through and come up with working formulas that we can easily quote to solve questions here. So if I have water dissociating partially into the H plus plus OH minus ion, Water is a weak electrolyte, so it dissociates on its own partially to produce the H plus ions and the OH minus ions. However, the H plus here is so small that sometimes we can have it as H2O plus H2O reversibly producing H3O plus plus OH minus. So if we have this, you can see that the H plus and the, o, the H3O plus, there's a difference, and that difference is water. So it means that the ozonium ion H3O plus and the hydrogen ion H plus have a difference of a water molecule. So we can say that the H plus, that is the hydrogen ions, is hydrated. And if it is hydrated, it forms the ozonium or hydrozonium ion. So in that case, it is much, much more stable in solution. But for simplicity, you can go for the H plus and OH minus ions. So from here, since it is an equilibrium system, then we can write the equilibrium constant for the reaction. So from equilibrium reactions, it is the product of the concentrations of the product raised to their stoichiometric coefficient divided by the concentrations of the reactant raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficient. So concentration of H plus times that of OH minus ions on the reactant. But here the reactant is a pure liquid. And this is aqueous, that is also aqueous. So from equilibrium reactions, pure liquids do not appear in equilibrium constant reactions because it is a constant. The solute to solvent ratio is constant. 
Therefore, I can write the equilibrium constant to be the concentration of H plus ions times that of the OH minus ions. Now, because the ions are being produced as a result of dissociation of the H2O, we call that ionic product of water. So I have KW. That's the ionic product of water. So in effect, I can write my KW to be the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions. But at 298 Kelvin, the KW is a constant value. So KW has a value 10 power negative 14. So I can say that the concentration of H plus ions times that of OH minus ions equal to 10 power negative 14. In a neutral system, the concentration of H plus ions equal to that of the OH minus ions. Therefore, wherever I see the OH minus ions, I can replace it with the H plus ions. So I can have concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of H plus ions equal to 10 power negative 14. So I'm going to have concentration of H plus ions squared equal to 10 power negative 14. So I'll have concentration of H plus ions equal to root of 10 power negative 14. And that gives me 10 power negative 7. More the DM kit. So since we said that the concentration of hydrogen ions equal to the concentration of OH minus ions, I can also say that concentration of H plus concentration of OH minus ions equal to 10 power negative 7 more per DM kit. That's in a neutral system. And don't forget that it is an equilibrium system. Therefore, it will be affected by temperature. So this concentration of H plus ions being 10 power negative 7 more per dm cubed is at 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees 25 degree Celsius. So it means that if the temperature changes, these values can also change. Take note. So, from here, from the concentration of H plus ions times that of OH minus ions equal to 10 power negative 14. I can take negative log of this expression so that I'll have negative log concentration of H plus ions plus into bracket negative log concentration of OH minus ions equal to negative log 10 power negative 14. But all the logs is to base 10. So I can have here to be 14. So in effect, I can say negative log concentration of H plus ions plus into bracket negative log concentration of OH minus ions equal to 
14. Or I can say negative log concentration of H plus ions minus log concentration of OH minus ions equal to 14. So take note of this. But negative log of the concentration of H plus ions equal to the power of hydrogen or potential of hydrogen. And that of the OH minus ions equal to the power of the hydroxide ions in solution. So wherever I see negative log of the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution, I replace it with pH. And then where I see negative log of the concentration of OH minus ions, I replace it with pOH. Therefore, my pOH plus my pH equal to 14. So take note of that. So that when I know the pH of a given solution, I can use the relation to calculate the pOH of the solution. So this is a, a working formula that we have. So we can just use it and then do some calculation. Now we have a working formula. So let's have a question. You have a favorite drink, these carbonated beverages, and you use the one you like. I am going to give the question based on what you like. So that's your favorite beverage. You write it there for yourself. I have my own, you have your own, everybody has their own. So, so the concentration of H plus ions in, so you put your favorite drink there. More per diem cubed. So put your favorite drink there, write it there for yourself. In your favorite drink, more per diem cubed, S 1.2 times 10 power negative 3. Determine the I, pH of the drink, you know, so put the name there, I, POH of the, so put the name there, okay, so when you are given a question, number one, ask yourself, what have I been given, we have been given the concentration of H plus ions to be 1.2 times 10 power negative 3 more per dm cubed. Then the next thing, what are we being asked to do? They say we should calculate IPH and then IIPOH. Then the third question, what do I know? I know that pH equal to negative log of the concentration of H plus ions. So that's all. That solves the I part of the question because the I part says I should calculate the pH. So do your substitution and evaluation. So negative log 1.2 times 10 power negative 3. And that gives me so reach out to your calculator and let's do this together. 
1.2 exponent neg 3. So if you do it well, you're going to have 2.92 to be the pH of <laughs> that drink you like. Containing 1.2 times 10 power negative 3 more per dm cube H plus ions concentration. What else? POH of the drink. What do I know? I know that the pH connects the POH to give me 14. So the pH plus the POH gives me 14. So if I know the pH, then I should be able to calculate the POH. So my POH be 14 minus pH. The pH is 2.92, so 14 minus 2.92, and that gives me 11.08, or I can make it 11.1. So you see that. When the pH is low, the pOH will be high, and vice versa. So you take note that if I have a low pH, then that solution or whatever I'm dealing with is acidic. We have more H plus ions in solution, so we'll have acidic substance. If I have more OH minus ions in solution, then that will be basic. So you take note, this is how you... So if we are talking about acidic something, and you calculate the pH to be say 11.1, then it means that substance is not acidic, high pH, you have more OH minus ions in solution. Let's have another question. We are still dealing with, okay, so let's have some household items. Let's say bleach or dettol or parazo in your home, so a household item. So write it down. The pH of, maybe you have a favorite brand that you use at home. So the pH of, then you write it there. S. So you give me value, which value will you give us? Okay, it's 10. So the pH of that product you have at home is 10. Calculate the I, hydrogen ion, concentration of the product I hydroxide ion concentration of the product Right. So the questions three, one. What have I been given? I have the pH to be ten, so I know pH. What am I being asked to do? Hydrogen ion concentration of the product. 
the product you know its name so my is the product so why is the name put it there what do i know i know that the ph equal to negative log of the concentration of h plus ions so that answers the first one so I've been given a pH and I'm being asked to calculate the concentration of H plus ions. So all I need to do is to have my hydrogen. Let's take it from so I'll have negative negative pH equal to log of the concentration of hydrogen ions I know the value the pH is 10 so if that is the case then I'm going to take the inverse law of this to give me the concentration of H plus ions. So since it is to base 10, I'm going to have the concentration of H plus ions equal to 10 power negative pH. So if I know the value of pH, which is 10, then I can say 10 power negative 10. And that gives me a value. So you can enter that into your calculator. You have it there. So shift log negative 10, and that will give you an answer to be 1.0 times 10 power negative 10. So that is the hydrogen ion concentration. Then the next one says we should calculate the hydroxide ion concentration of the product. What do I know? I know that concentration of H plus ions times that of OH minus ions equal to 10 power negative 14. So these are the principles I have, the formulas I have. So I should be able to produce them and do my calculations. What am I looking for? We are looking for the OH minus ions in solution. So I can have 10 power negative 14 divided by concentration of H plus ions. The concentration of H plus ions is 10 power negative 10. So I'll have 10 power negative 14 divided by 10 power negative 10. And that gives me an answer. So you can go into your calculator and have exponent neg 14 divided by answer to give you that. So I'm going to have... 10 power negative 4. More per diem cubed. So from there, we can also calculate the pOH. Since we have pH given to be 10, then I can also find the pOH from there and go and take negative log of the value of the pOH to give me the concentration of the hydroxide ions in solution. So whichever way you get the same math. Right. So before we move on, the exams are coming and you will sit for the exam. The wisdom of choosing exam questions, it's very, very important. 
when you are given the paper, you sit by it, does it start work? Then students will be rushing. They want to start work. They will start. As they go through, they realize that no, they cannot go anymore. Then they will cancel. As much as possible, avoid cancellation of your answers to a question. How do I avoid cancellation? Take your time and read all the questions. Take note, in chemistry, you have five questions for which you answer four out of it. So take your time, read everything. Look at the max allocation as well. Which one will give me more marks? Which one can I conveniently answer and it will give me more marks? Very, very important. So take your time, read all the questions, analyze everything before you put pen to paper. I always say that put your thoughts together before you start writing. So if you don't put your thought together before you start writing, that will cause you to make a mistake. So please take your time and then get it done and get it done well. Okay, so that's it. So we can be given the concentration and we are asked to calculate the pH or POH. We can be given the POH or pH and we are asked to calculate the concentration. So it's just inverse laws. Then you are good to go. That's how it will come with that. Now, let's look at a typical solution that is given to you. Then they will say calculate the pH of that solution. So let's say ACL. So with the ACL, we can have it in water. So I can have HCl plus H2O producing H3O plus plus Cl minus. So the ACL is dissociating in water, but the ACL is a strong acid, so it dissociates completely, so you use only forward arrow to represent. I can also just write it as ACL aqueous producing H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. That is also accepted for simplicity. So you can go the first way, you can go the second way. Whichever way is accepted. And don't forget, we said that the H plus is a hydrated, the H3O plus is a hydrated H plus. So objective test question, you should look at why the H plus is so small and unstable in solution. So in order to be stable, it must be caged. You know, they will hold you to be stable, right? So with this, if I know the concentration of ACL, I should be able to calculate the concentration of H plus ions, and that will lead me to calculate the pH and then the POH calculate the concentration of OH minus ions and so on and so forth in solution. So let's pick a question on that. The concentration of ACL solution is 0 0.0121 mole per dm cubed. What is the pH of the solution? So we are looking for pH. Now it is a, a substance. So this substance will dissociate in water to produce the ions. And then the H plus ions are produced. 
So here, you bring in more concept. So if I bring in more concept, then I have to use more ratio. And the more ratio is the bridge. So it's bridging. This is reactant. And then this is product. So it is bridging the reactant and the product. Or I say that it is the bridge between where you are, that is what you know, and where you are going, that is what you don't know. So if I'm using the mole ratio, it's bridging me from the known onto the unknown. What do I know here, or what do we know here? We know the concentration of HCl. And they are asking us to calculate the pH of the solution. So if I am to calculate the pH of the solution, then I should know the concentration of the H plus ions because the pH is the negative log of the concentration of H plus ions. So I use more ratios. So here, the more per DMQ means that 0 0.0121 more is in one dm cubed. So my mole ratio is one mole of HCl is equivalent to one mole of the H plus ions. Therefore, the concentration of H plus ions will give me 0 0.0121 more per dm kit because one mole of ACL is equivalent to one mole of H plus ions therefore will give me 0 0.0121 mole so the moles of H plus ion is 0 0.0121 mole and this mole is in one dm kit so I can quote that to be the concentration we are not talking about concentration ratios we say more ratios. The fact that the number of moles is the same as the concentration doesn't mean that it should just go and you have to go stepwise, leading from here to there. What is leading us? It is the more ratio. So you must establish that relation before you'll be able to get what you don't know. So please do it like that. Whether it will be the same or not, go a step with. Establish the bridge before you can cross. Without the bridge, you cannot cross to the other side. So now that we have the concentration of our hydrogen ions, I can just go and have my pH equal to negative log, concentration of H plus ions, then negative log 0 0.0121 and that gives me an answer. So neg log of 0 0.0121 so if we do it well then we should have 1.9 or I can say 1.92 that's all so from there we can calculate PO, poh we can calculate the oh minus ions in this solution so we are good to go please take note So that is an acid producing one mole of H plus ions in solution. So we call that acid a monobasic or monoprotic acid. What about if the acid is producing, say, two moles of H plus ions in solution? So let's also look at 
a typical of such using H2SO4 as an example. So I have H2SO4 aqueous. It will dissociate completely to produce two moles of H plus ions and then SO4 2 minus. So that now the ratio of the A2SO4 to that of the H plus is 1 is to 2. So if I know the concentration of the HSO4, I should be able to calculate the concentration of H plus ions in solution. So let's say that I have 0 0.00111. More per dm cubed of H2SO4 solution. And we are asked to calculate the pH. So if we are to calculate the pH, we need to know the concentration of the H plus ions in solution. So here it is 0 0.00111 more in 1 dm cubed. So to interpret this, it is 0 0.00111 more in one dm cubed. So all the calculations I'll be doing here is in one dm cubed. So I can, I can compare more ratios. Bridge me from where I am to where I want to go. So one more H2SO4 is equivalent to 2 moles of H plus ions. So what will 0 0.00111 mole of H2SO4 give me? So you're going to give me 0. Point times 2 mole H plus ions. Right, so from there, I will have 0 0.00222 mole of H plus ions. So moles of H plus ions will give me 0 0.00222 mole. This mole ratio, you can also express it as N of H2SO4 on N of H plus equal to 1 on 2. So if I know the N of H2SO4, then I'll multiply by 2 to give me the N of H plus ions. And don't forget that that mole is in 1 dm cube. Therefore, I can calculate the concentration to be... So concentration of H plus ions will give me 0 0.00222 mole per dm cubed. So from there, I can quote my pH equal to negative log of the hydrogen ions concentration, and it gives me a value. So my pH equal to negative log concentration of hydrogen ions. So I have negative log of 0 0.00222. That gives me a value. So neg log. Two point six five. So that is my pH. If you are asked to calculate the pH, you can do that. 
using the relation. So you know the relations. That is what you know, the principles and the formulas you know. So when you see a question, ask yourself, what have I been given? What am I being asked to do? What do I know? By the time you finish asking yourself these three questions, answer is there looking at you. So you put it down. No cancellation. Okay. Let's look at the other way also. We have been looking at acid acids. Let's also look at bases. So let's use NaOH for example. So here too, NaOH is a strong base. So it will dissociate completely as Na plus plus OH minus ions. So if I know the concentration of the NaOH solution, I will compare mole ratios and then find the moles of OH minus, find the concentration. So in that case, I'm going to find the POH. Or if I know the concentration of the OH minus ions, I can find the concentration of H plus ions, and then that will lead me to calculate the, the pH of the solution. So let's pick a value and then we do it together. So let's say that the concentration of NaOH equal to, yep, give me a value. Okay, 1.8 times 10 power negative 3 mole per dm cubed. Right. So here, the ratio of the moles of NaOH is equal to that of OH minus ions. And of course, it is 1. So 1 is to 1 ratio. Therefore, N of OH minus ions will give me 1.8 times 10 power negative 3 more. And this more is in 1 dm cubed. Therefore, concentration of OH minus ions will give me 1.8 times 10 power negative 3 more per dm cubed. So now that I know the concentration of OH minus ions. I can go and calculate the concentration of H plus ions and then take negative log of it to give me the pH. Or I can calculate the POH and then go and take it from 14 to give me the pH. Whichever way, you get the right answer. All you need to know or all you need to do is to apply the principles Right, that's all. It's just like you are going to a place, you can only get to that particular place if you bought the right vehicle. That is how it is. So use the right principles, you get the right answer. Okay. So whichever way, I want to calculate the concentration of H plus ions. So I'm going to use Is this too difficult to keep? So concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions equal to 10 power negative 14. So you make the concentration of H plus ions, the subject, and find that, and go and take negative log. You are done. Okay, so concentration of H plus ions equal to 10 power negative 14 divided by concentration of OH minus ions. Do I know the concentration of OH minus ions? Yes. So I'm going to have 10 power negative 14 
divided by 1.8 times 10 power negative 3. So that gives me... So exponent neg 14 divided by 1.8 exponent neg 3. So I'm going to have 5.56 times 10 power negative 12. Please take note of the value. You have 5.555555. Approximation is very important. If you do the wrong approximation, <laughs> it will go against you, you are wrong. So for example, if I write 5.5, or I write 5.55, times 10 power negative 12. This is wrong, wrong approximation. So you lose. So when it comes to when you enter the values into the calculator, please take your time and get the right thing done. Don't rush, take your time. You have three hours for the objective test question 50 and then two hours one hour for objective test question, 50 objective test questions, and then two hours for the theory, the written. So if it is two hours and you're answering four questions, each question should take 30 minutes. And if you know what you're about, you can answer one question before 30 minutes. So take your time. Okay. Right, so now that we have our concentration of H plus ions, I can just take negative log to give me my pH. So take negative log. So my pH will be 11 point, watch the value well. <laughs> 11.255. So if I'm approximating, it will give me 11.3 or 11.36. And that will score. So take note of it. If I don't want it that way, then I can... Take negative log of 1.8 times 10 power negative 3 to give me the POH. Then you take that value from 14 to give you the pH. That way to describe. So please, best practices. Choose any correct method that you want to solve these things. You will get the same math. Right, so the same way, if the base is producing two moles of OH minus ions in solution, so the mole ratio will be one is to two, then you go as we saw in the case of the dibasic acid. So the principle is the same. Whatever form the question is coming, the principle will never change so long as you use the right ones to handle the question. Okay, so that's it about the strong acids and bases. They dissociate completely in solution, so you do the calculation. Then, when you were treating acids and bases, he also talked about weak acids and bases. So how do you take care of when you are dealing with weak acids and bases? So let's look at it. You have already established that the weak acids and bases, they dissociate partially in solution. So if they dissociate partially in solution, it means that they are establishing 
an equilibrium system. So the undissociated acid will be in equilibrium with the ions in solution. How do we deal with such? Because those places too, we have to calculate the pH and then the pOH in there. Okay. So let's say I have a weak acid. Whichever weak acid you can think about. But hypothetically, we want to have the HA to be our weak acid in water. Because it is weak, it will establish equilibrium. So HA plus H2O equilibriumly producing H3O plus plus A minus. Or you can just write H A aqueous equilibriumly producing H plus plus A minus. For simplicity, whichever way you want, we are just establishing a principle after which that's it. Now, it is an equilibrium system. So, it is swinging. It can go that way and it can come that way. Take note, we said that temperature affects equilibrium systems. So, temperature can cause the reaction to move forward, producing more ions in solution or bring it back, producing less ions in solution. So, with this one here, Initially, the acid produces no ions in solution. And as time elapses, ions appear in solution. And because it is an equilibrium system, then we can have the equilibrium concentration. It is from there that we can use anything to calculate anything. <laughs> okay. So we want to use the, because you like rice, we want to use the rice table. So that anytime you, uh, you are enjoying your rice, then you can remember that oh, there is something called rice table and that has to do with acids and bases calculations of pH and pOH. <laughs> okay, so if the HAA cures reversibly producing H plus plus a minus aqueous is the reaction. Then I represent that as R. So if it is a table, you can just draw a table. Use your ruler to draw a table. Then we let the initial concentration of the weak acid to be C. So that is initial so C with this initial concentration of HA there will be no ions in solution so it means that initially there are zero ions in solution but as time elapses there will be a change just like you are heating water if you put the water on fire immediately you see that the water is as it is when you put it on the fire. But as time elapses, the coolness of the water changes and becomes warm, 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 and becomes hot and hotter that if you put your hand inside that water, only God knows what will happen. So all the cold water has now turned into hot water. Okay. So initially, concentration C, no ions in solution. So zero concentration for H plus ions and then zero concentration for A minus ions. 
So as time elapses, there will be a change. So let's say that X is the degree of dissociation of the HA. That is the weak acid. So how much of the HA breaks down will produce an equivalent how much of the H plus and then OH minus ions in solution. So if from rate of reaction, you have established that the concentration of the reactant decreases, whilst the concentration of the product increases. So the rate at which the concentration of the reactant is decreasing is equivalent to the rate at which the concentration of the product is increasing. So that there will be a change. So I'll have X, then it will appear like that. So how much of the HA is breaking down will give rise to an equivalent how much of the ions increasing in solution. Because it is an equilibrium state, if we want to do any calculation here, then we have to use the equilibrium concentrations to do whatever calculation we want to do. So I'll have. So C, if I add the initial and the change, I'm going to have C minus X to give me the equilibrium concentration. So C minus X. And then here 0 plus X will give me X. 0 plus X will give me X. Okay. So that is the rice. R-I-C-E. So rice. If you want to put it in a table form, then it becomes rice table. So that's the rice table. So if you have this, then what should we do? Because it is an equilibrium system, it means that we can write the equilibrium constant for the reaction. So I can have K, that's equilibrium constant for concentration, or I can just write equilibrium EQ, so equilibrium constant equal to the product of the concentrations of the product divided by the concentration of the reactant. So I'm going to have concentration of H plus times that of A minus all on concentration of HA. From the table, the concentration of H plus is X, the equilibrium concentration. That of A minus is also X. That of the HA is C minus X. So you do the substitution, X, X, all on C minus X. So I can have x squared on c minus x equal to the equilibrium constant. But because we are dealing with weak acid, for example, the weak acid has a dissociation constant. So the weak acid dissociation constant represented as Ka, I can say that, but... K equilibrium equal to K A. Therefore, I can have my K equal to X squared on C minus X. From here, we can make an assumption. Making an assumption K 
a equal to x squared on c minus x. Looking at the degree of dissociation, weak acid, it means that the value of x is so negligible that I can say that c minus x is equal to c. And this assumption can only hold when the value of x is 5% of the initial concentration of the acid. Other than that, this assumption here will not hold. This assumption here, once again, means that the value of x is so small, insignificant. It will not have any effect on the concentration, the initial concentration of the acid. So if that is the case, then I can say that Ka equal to x squared on C. You see, so the value of x should be 5% of C. Then it can hold. Above 5%, it won't hold. Therefore, you have to use quadratic equations to find whatever value you want to find. But less, maximum 5%, then you have to, the assumption will hold for that particular calculation. At, at this stage of questions, the values will be 5% less. So you can use the assumption to get the calculations done. So you are safe. Because you, all, you want to ask, how will I know that the value of X concentration? So the nature of the questions at this stage will provide that. So you can make the assumption and do your calculations. So from here, I can say that S squared equal to C K. So X equal to roots of C K A. C is the initial concentration of the acid. A is the acid dissociation constant, which you'll be given in calculations. So we can find the value of X. But don't forget, this value of X equal to H plus ions. H plus ions concentration. So if you agree with me, then I can say that concentration of H plus ions equal to root of the initial concentration times the acid dissociation constant. So this is a working formula. So that if you know the initial concentration of the acid, and then the acid dissociation constant, you can calculate the concentration of the H plus ions, and then you can calculate the pH of the weak acid. And of course, you can calculate the pOH, the concentration of OH minus ions, and so on and so forth. Right, so you have been with me for long. Don't change the channel. You are on Revision Show with me, Wisdom Agbesinya, as we see one. Stay tuned. We'll be back. tip for today is brush your teeth regularly flossing every other day use soft or medium brushes use toothpaste that contains fluoride in them 
and change your brush every three months and visit your dentist twice every year. Treat your mouth well so that your mouth will treat you well. It will enhance your self-confidence and help you eat and grow well. Examination malpractice is any form of deliberate cheating on examinations which provides one or more candidates with an unfair advantage or disadvantage. It is an illegal act and can be perpetrated by a single individual or groups. It can occur outside or inside the classroom. So before you enter the exam hall, make sure you follow these instructions. 1. Empty your pockets and avoid entering with a foreign material that is smuggling of answer scripts. Two, avoid writing on sheets of papers, handkerchiefs, erasers, covers of calculators, and on the skin. Remember not to fall victim to any examination more practices so you could have a peaceful examination. Prepare well and we wish you all the best. Joy learning, keep learning. It's time to wish your loved ones well on that special occasion. Is it the birthday or anniversary of your child, friend, classmate, your schoolmate, your teacher, or non-teaching staff of your school? The all-new JL Birthday Wish by Ghana's number one educational TV channel hits your regular classroom screen. And as usual, it is time for Jack to play and have fun. It has been made easy for you, and this is how. Send a picture of your loved ones. Add their names, school, and location, and a heartwarming birthday message and finally follow us on official joy learning tv on instagram like the jl birthday wish post and tag five friends send it to our whatsapp line 0247 108 738 and voila your birthday wish will be aired on joy learning tv and all our social media platforms learning is made fun with the jl birthday wish joy learning keep learning for a new way to revise for your wasi then joy learning has everything you need in place yes we are back with the 2023 revision show for shs3 learners don't worry your favorite question of the day section wasn't left out and oh you can engage with your facilitators during live tv lessons ask questions and get real-time feedback in the comfort of your own space the 2023 revision show for SHS learners shows every Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. right here on Joy Learning. Joy Learning, learning is so fun. Joy Learning, keep learning. Right, you are welcome back on live show on Joy Learning channel with me, Wisdom and we signal as with the one. Doing it with you in chemistry, with calculations in acids and bases. So the topic, I always divide it into two. We have the qualitative, then we have the quantitative. It is the quantitative aspect we are looking at. When I see a question, how should I approach it to give me a maximum mark? That's what the Qualitative aspect where you read definitions, you give examples, that one, I know you are so vested in it. So the calculations, stay tuned. You are welcome back. Right, so before we left off, we were talking about a working principle or formula to handle pH and pOH in weak acids and bases. So we're using an example of a weak acid generally just to come up with a working formula. 
and I said that because you love rice, we're gonna use a rice table to do it. So we have our rice table here and we are going through to this point. And we said that this assumption C minus X equal to C is only valid when the value of X is less than 5% of C. That is the initial concentration of the asset. Now we have concentration of the H plus ion equal to root of C, initial concentration of the weak acid and its acid dissociation constant. And this is a formula. So if I know the concentration, the value there, the Ka value, I should be able to calculate the H plus ions. Then I'll go and take negative log to give me pH. And of course, from there, I can calculate other variables like the concentration of OH minus ions and or the pH, pOH of that particular given solution. Right, so from here, we can just use a question to address. We can move further from here. So here, we can decide to take negative log because we are talking about pH. So if we take negative log of this equation, it will give us another equation we can use. But that equation has halves. And some of us handling halves is a problem. So if you know that you are like that, entering using halves in calculations with your calculator, if you cannot handle it like that, please don't go and commit yourself. Go and quote wrong formula, it will go against you. So this is very simple and straightforward. I know concentration of the weak acid, I know the dissociation constant, calculate the concentration of H plus ions, and then go and take negative log. No half matter. Okay, so let's continue. So let's pick a question and I address it. So let's say that the Ka for, say, H. COOH. This one, I use it to confuse students a lot. So that is methanoic acid from ant by bee stings and so on. But this one, you can write it as H2CO2. You can also write it as CO2H2. So take, take I always laugh at my student because if you know it this way and then you get to exams and they ask you to give the IOPAC name of this one and this, if you don't take care, you don't get it correct. See, so take note. Because the HCOH or HCO2H, everybody will know it like that. So if everybody knows it like that, then let's see those who really understood the formula of methanoic acid. That is from chemistry of carbon compounds, what you call organic chemistry, you see. So you take note of that. So let's say that the acid dissociation constant for methanoic acid is 1.5 times 10 power negative 5. So that is Ka. It's a constant way to be given to you in the question. Now, what do we want to calculate? Tell us what we want to calculate. We want to calculate pH, okay? So we are looking for pH. If we are looking for pH, the initial concentration will be 0 0.100 more per dm cubed. Okay, so what do we have? We have been given the Ka value, 
we have been given the concentration of the acid. So straight away, I know that the concentration of H plus ions will give me roots of C, K, A. Take note, this equation is based on an assumption that the degree of dissociation of the weak acid is so insignificant, is so negligible, is so small. It can be ignored. So we have ignored the degree of dissociation to give us this expression. So anytime you quote this expression, you are telling us that you are assuming that the value of x is less than 5% of C. That is the meaning of quoting this one. So whatever you are doing, you are assuming that C minus X equal to C. Right. So if that is the case, put in your values. Roots of C is 0 0.100 times the Ka value, 1.5 times 10 power negative 5. Please, the values, the Ka value, don't go and memorize them because if it is an examination that requires calculation involving this one, you'll be given the value. So you just do your substitution and go. Okay, so what is the concentration of H plus ions? So here we go, roots. 0 0.1 times 1.5 exponent neg 5. So that gives me 1.22 times 10 power negative 3. Mope DM kit. Right. Don't forget the question of the day is not left out. So I'm sure by now you have the principles that you'll be able to solve it or you have already solved it, then let's get interactive as we continue. So the number as usual, 0, 3, 0, 2, 2. Let me write it so that you can see it on your screen. So it is 0, 3, 0, 2, 2, 1, 1, 7, 0, 5, or 7, 0, 6. You can see, can you see on your screen? Okay, so you can call in and then let's get interactive. You can ask questions in assets and bases. You can ask questions on the examination that you are preparing for and we'll try giving you the tips that you need for a successful exam. Okay, let's continue. So you can call in. Let's get interactive. Okay, so now I have the concentration of H plus ions to be 1.22 times 10 power negative 3 more per DMQ. So I know that pH equal to negative log concentration of H plus ions. So I have negative log 1.22 times 10 power negative 3 and that gives me an answer. So the log of my answer should give me 2.91. So that is my pH of the acid with concentration 0 0.1 and dissociation constant 1.5 times 10 power negative 5. So from here, we can also calculate the pOH. That will give me 14 minus 2.9, 1, 14, not 10. Fourteen. So 14. 11.1. Okay, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Yes. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Please, your name and where you are calling us from. 
and the young actors in the foreign from Casper. Okay. Okay, so if you interview like HP movies, then you can write assets. And you went on the the H to C C O C. So this is the answer of the deficiency of that particular compound. How you going to do? Oh, okay. That is a very nice question there. Great one there. Okay. So how do I state the basicity of that asset? Yes. You know it to be H C O O H. So with this, let's look at the formula. The structure. So I'll have H there carbon there, bonding doubly to oxygen there, and then O there, bonding to H. This H here is the acid H. Why is it an acid H? Because it is directly bonded to the O, the oxygen there. And oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen so it will polarize it so plus the minus there so this one can easily cliff into solution as h plus ions so when that happens it means that the hcoh is releasing one mole of h plus ions in solution so the basicity is one now if it is written like this, H2CO2 or HCO2, I'm uh, sorry, CO2H2, ask yourself how many hydrogen atoms are bonded directly to the oxygen atom? If it is one, it will release one mole of H plus ion in solution. So the basicity is one. If it is two, then it will release two. So basicity is two and so on and so forth. Any yeah. other? Thank you so much. Any other? So, it, so if you go and see it, H2CO2 or CO2H2, it is one basicity is one because only one hydrogen atom is directly bonded to oxygen atom this hydrogen here the other hydrogen is bonded to carbon it cannot cleave into solution the bond there is a strong one the electronegativity of h and c is almost the same so it's not polarized enough to cliff into solution. Yes. Yep. Thank you so much for calling. That's great. I really enjoyed that question. Please, you can also call us on 030-221-1705 or 706. Let's get interactive. We are preparing for our final exams, and it is drawing much, much closer. Before we continue, as the exam draws closer, please don't get confused. See, that consistency you used when you entered Form 1, Form 2, now you are in Form 3, that consistency of studying, keep it like that. Uh, hello, welcome to Revision Show with me, Wisdom Agresinia. Hello. Oh, okay. Right, so let's get interactive. Let's continue. Right, so we have our POH to be 11.1, we can calculate the concentration of OH minus ions of this particular acid. Take note. 
let's have another question. So this one here is a typical exam question. Calculate the number of OH minus ions present in 250 cm cube of a solution whose pH is 3. Whose pH is 3? So, how do I calculate this? Don't forget the questions. What have I been given? We have volume of the solution. What else? We have pH of the solution. So, if I have the pH of the solution, the first thing that should come into mind is the concentration of H plus ions in solution so i can calculate the concentration so calculating the concentration of h plus ions will give me 10 power minus ph so 10 power negative 3 more per dm cubed you see so if i have that one I can calculate the H plus ions. So in calculating the H plus I, uh, OH, sorry, OH minus ions in solution, I'm going to have 10 power negative 14 divided by 10 power negative 3. So that gives me 10 power negative 11. You see, more per dm cubed. So that is the concentration. It's in more per dm cubed. But they are saying that we should find the number of OH minus ions in a given volume. So it means that now that I have concentration, I have volume. Hello, Crystal Bell. Yes, where are you calling us from? Yeah. Hello, Christabel. Hello. Where are you ca calling us from? I'm calling you from Christian. Okay. Wow. Yep. What do you have for us? Please, I can come back to what I think I think I have to ask. Hello, Christabel. Hello. Yes, please. Yes. Ask your question. Yes, I will ask your question. Oh, okay. So that's fine. That's so, Christabel, this is not a Form 1 topic. So you wouldn't, you may not be able to understand it well. So when you get to form two, you are going to study this and you get the understanding. Thank you so much for following Joy Learning Channel. Okay? So keep on with Joy Learning Channel. Thank you so much for calling. Bye-bye. Right, so we have the concentration of OH minus ions, and they say we should calculate the number of OH minus ions in solution. The solution, we have a volume, 250. So we can calculate the number of moles in that volume. Then we can find the number. So... I can use ratio and proportion, or I can use the formula to do it. So with the formula, I know that concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume. Hello, Hannah. Hello. Where are you calling us from? In the Kakwa. Okay. What do you have for us? Um, The concentration, the OH. Uh -huh. I thought it was 
the concentration of O is 10 power negative 14 divided by 10. Uh, 10 power negative 14 and 10 power negative. Oh, Hannah, it seems you join us late. Because from the beginning, we established this before. We are now applying it in questions. Are you there? Yes. So, okay. I thought it was. 10 power negative 14 minus 10 power negative. Yes. No, 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 no. Look at it. We have the concentration of H plus ions times that of OH minus ions equal to 10 power negative 14. Oh. So if I'm looking for the concentration of OH minus ions, I'm going to have concentration of OH minus ions equal to 10 power negative 14 divided by concentration of H plus ions. Is that not it? Yes. Good. So we have the pH of the solution. So if we have the pH of the solution, we can calculate the concentration of H plus ions. Isn't it? Yes. Good. So if that is the case, but the concentration of H plus ions equal to 10 power negative 3. So what should yes. we do? Uh -huh. You got it now? Yes. Good. That is excellent. Clap for yourself. Good. Are we ready to go? Yes. Thank you. That's excellent. That is why we are here. Right. So, Hannah, thank you so much for calling all the way from Takwa. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. So work, work, and let's see the number of OH minus ions in 250 cm cubed or solution, okay? Okay. Okay. So you can call back and give us answer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, so we have the concentration of OH minus ions as 10 power negative 11. This is in 1,000. So I can use the formula, C equal to N on V. We are looking for N in 250. So V is 250. C is given. So I can have So I can have concentration, which is 10 power negative 11 times 250. And don't forget, let the 250 be in dm cubed. So I can divide everything by 1,000. Or I can just have 10 power negative 11 times 0 0.25. That one will also work. Or... I can also say 10 power negative 11. Hello, Ajiman. Hello. You are welcome. Thank you. Where are you calling us from? From Malawi. Okay. What do you have for us? Hello, Ajiman. Oh, sorry, sorry, Ajiman. Please. Call back, call back, call back. And let's get interactive. Please, you can also get us direct on 030-221-1705 or 706. Let's get interactive. Bring all your questions on what we are doing or any exam advice that you want. You can ask. We will be happy to give you everything. Right. Or I can have 10 power. Hello, Lukman. Yes. You are welcome. Thank you. Where are you calling us from? What's the name? Okay. What, what do you have? Oh, oh, no, no, no. This is not good enough. Look, man, 
try getting through again. I want to listen to your excellent question. Or 10 power negative 11 times 250 times 10 power negative 3. You can also do it like that. But candidates in exams, they will tell you examination. Uh, hello, Sandra. Yeah. You are welcome. Thank you. What do you have for us? Okay, thank you so much for calling Sandra. So all these expressions will give you the same answer. But they said examination panic or examination shock or however they refer to it. So if you are frightened at your table, sometimes you forget to bring the negatives. So I always not advise students to be using negative because if you don't use your negatives properly, you will lose out. Therefore, you are not there to please anybody. You are there to make your marks. So the most... Hello, Fatima. You are welcome. Thank you. Where are you calling us from? From Volga. Okay. What do you have Please. for I had the answer to be 1.505 times 10 power. So. Okay. Ions. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Fatima, for calling. And thank you for being a friend to Joy Learning Channel. You're welcome. Keep learning. Okay. So don't go and commit yourself in any way because of negative. So the simplest way, please convert your volume before you do your substitution. So if that is the case, I'm going to have exponent neg 11 times 0 0.25, and that gives me n to be 2.5 times 10 power negative 12. So here, this is the number of moles in the 250cm cube of solution, therefore, my number of OH minus ions will be 2.5 times 10 power. Hello. Hello. Yep, you are welcome. Thank you. What do you have for us? I'll please uh, 10 negative 11. That's the number of hydrogen ions? Yeah, times uh, 0 0.25. That part, I don't get it. Okay. 
So the number of moles you got is what? Yeah. What is the number of moles? 2.5 Oh I can't really get you Have you calculated the number of hydrogen ions yeah. What is the value? Okay. So that's Fatima's answer. She has left her answer in four significant figures for three significant figures. It will be 1.51 times 10 power 12. So Fatima, that is excellent that you got the answer there. Okay, so we want to go back to our problem of the day and let's see who... Hello, Joshua. Hello, please. Uh, number of moves and uh, the number of moves. Uh -huh. So the number of moves will be 2.5 times 10 exponent. Make it small. Okay. So you will find uh, make number of moves the standard. So n is equal to number of moves, uh, number of x over l. Yes. So you multiply the number of moves by the Avogadro constant given by in the equation. So it would be two point five times ten exponent twelve by just six point zero two times ten exponent twenty three. And that would give us one point five times ten exponent twelve times. Good. So, in giving us and the P, so you will make a P will be a subject. So it will be P will be equal to four times three, and P will give us the. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's good. That's good. So Joshua is calculating the POH first before he will go and calculate for the concentration of the OH minus ions. Then he will find the number of moles of OH minus ions in the 250 cm cube volume and then go and multiply with the Avogadro number. So that way to you get the same answer and so on. So that's excellent out there. And we are so confident that you will come out with flying colors in your coming exams. Right, so thank you all for calling. Now this is the problem of the day, which says that we are dealing with amino ethane, a weak base. We have the KB there. And look at it. Before I continue, I want you to take note of this. Some you confuse with number of moles and number of particles. Don't confuse them. They are two different things altogether. So if you are handling questions like that, take your time, get the parameters properly, and get the right thing done. So KB is given. But somebody will say, ah, but we didn't talk about KB. Look at it. It's, this is relational. You relate it. So 
you know something, you can relate it to what you don't know. We said that the concentration of H plus ions equal to root of the initial concentration of the acid and its acid dissociation constant. So the Ka here is the acid dissociation constant for a weak acid. So if I have a Kb here, it means that that is the a, a base, weak base dissociation constant. So if we are talking about a base and we know that OH minus ions in solution make a solution a base, then our problem is solved. So I can say that concentration of OH minus equal to root of C, which is the concentration, initial concentration of the base times Kb. So from here, I can calculate the concentration of OH minus ions. That can lead me to calculate POH. That can lead me to calculate pH and so on. Hello, Emmanuel. Hello. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Marshall. Okay, what do you have for us? Oh, sorry, Emmanuel, try and get through again. Let's get interactive. Call, ask all your questions. Whatever you want, we'll give you. Let's continue. Right, so write an alpha equilibrium equation for its dissociation in water. So I have CH3, CH2, HN2 plus water. It is a weak base. So reversibly producing CH3, CH2, NH3 plus plus OH minus. Hello, Derek. Yeah. You are welcome, Derek. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you calling us from, Derek? Calling from Kumasi. Kumasi, okay. What do you have for us? Oh, sorry, Derek. Try getting through again. Right, this is the reason why amino ethane is basic. Because when it is in water, it produces excess OH minus ions in solution. That's why the question is that it's a weak base. So this is it. So the Kb will be equal to concentration of CH3, CH2, NH3 plus times OH minus ions concentration all divided by concentration of CH3, CH2 Obin Junior Yes You are What is strong or weak? Uh, that, I want to know how I will identify whether it's weak or strong. Oh, okay. How will I identify that a substance is weak or uh, strong? Weak strong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good question there. Take note that there are some common acids and bases that are classified as weak or, uh, or strong. And whenever we are talking about the strength of an acid or a base, then we are talking about the dissociation ability. That is also why you are giving examples. And those examples are the ones you should know at this stage. And those examples are common examples that can appear in examinations. So if in the course of my study, an example is given as 
ACL is a strong acid. Take note that HCl, HI, HI is a stronger acid than ACL. Yeah. But always you give ACL as a strong acid because it is so common. So if I say that ACL is a strong acid, I have it there. I can show it to you that this is ACL. So if I know that ACL is a strong acid and I enter exam and I'm asked to classify ACL, whether it's a weak acid or a strong acid, what should I do? I'll classify it as a strong acid. You see. So this is the basic way. You know the examples of... So those examples, you must know them. And if you are in the exam and they ask you to give examples of weak acid or weak bases, you give those common examples, which you know. So you don't go and be bringing some strange thing from anywhere. You know them, so provide them. Is that okay? Sometimes the question will specify that this particular substance is a weak acid, a weak base, and so on and so forth. Then you know how to handle it in the examination setting. Is that okay? Okay, thank you for calling or being genius. Right, so this is the expression, equilibrium equation for eight dissociation in water. So if you write this one, that gives you one mark. Then the follow-up question. Okay, yeah, two marks there. So that is the dissociation. Then the follow-up question is the expression. So you just write the expression Kb equal to concentration of CH3, CH2, NH3 plus OH minus concentration, all on concentration of CH3, CH2, NH2. So that is the expression, mama. Then, given that the concentration of amino ethane is... Hello? Hello? You are welcome. Thank you. Where are you calling us from? Kisam, okay. I don't get. Kisam, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, what do you have for us? Uh, the, my question is um, the problem of the bill. Yeah. When the child takes the vaccine, does it to the child for it? Please, then, could you repeat that? so much for that concern we'll discuss it so that next time you have it okay, okay. thank you so much for that concern okay. right so you can also call through and let's get interactive so given that the concentration of amino ethane is 0.311 mol per dm calculate the alpha POH of the solution. So from what we have done, my POH, I can find the concentration of that to be root of CKB. So root of C is 0 0.311 times KB. The KB is given in the question to be 4.5 times 10 power negative 4. So 
4.5 times 10 power negative 4. Then you have the concentration. So roots of that, so 0.311 times 4.5 exponent neg 4 gives me an answer. Gives me an answer. So that's 0 0.0118 more per dn kept. So my POH is negative log of 0 0.0118. That gives me to take negative log of answer gives me 1.9. Three. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So if you do that, you have the this one here, you have that one there. Then the next one says we should calculate the pH. So simple, my pH will give me 14 minus 1.93, and that gives me so simple 12. Point one, and then the last one says presented protonation of this. So with the presented protonation, we have the protonated amino eighteen over the original concentration of amino eighteen. So percentage. Protonation equal to concentration of CH3, CH2, and H3 plus on concentration of CH3, CH2, and H2. So this is what is the concentration that we have calculated. Take note, the OH minus ion concentration and then the protonated amino ethane is 1 is to 1 ratio. So we're going to have 0 0.0118 0 0.0118 divided by 0 0.311 times 100. So that gives 0 0.0118 divided by 0 0.311 times 100 to give me that, 3.79. Right. So take note, that is how we calculate percentage protonation, or sometimes it's a percentage ionization. So it's the concentration of the ions, the protonated substance divided by the initial concentration times 100 gives you that. So you can see it is 3.979%. So it means that this value here is less than 5% of the initial concentration. So the assumption that we are using to give us the concentration of OH minus I equal to root of CKA is valid. We are saying that concentration minus x is equal to that. So it is valid. Bye. Thank you so much. It's been so great with you on live show on Joy Learning Channel with me, Wisdom Agbesinyal, as always, with you one. Until we come your way again, solidly behind you for the coming exams, keep enjoying your preparation on Joy Learning Channel. Bye-bye. Are you looking for a new way to revise for your WASI? Then Joy Learning has everything you need in place.